house to home. Presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Okay, everyone, we are back and for house to home, Liz and Gina from Remax Diamond Realty Guam are here. And last week we kind of went a little bit mopey. We were talking about <laughs> probate and we said, okay, probate, the one thing that you can't get around is it's a time consuming process mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it can be an expensive process. It is a process, like you it said. It is a so, process. Liz. Um, but this week I was hoping we can kind of tackle on the difference between what value is listed in your probate documents as mm -hmm. far as the value of your property and what might be attainable in the market once you decide to sell it, if you shop it around and everything yeah. like that. So, yeah. so, so is, there, is there a scale, is there a window, is there, is there a range that is a ballpark for, you know, because, say, okay, say on a probate form or like the, the judge stamps the document says, this particular plot in village XYZ mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. worth 50 grand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Should I shop that out in the open market? And, and we're in a buyer's market right now. What can I, how, how, well, well, how much? Well, the, the question there is where did they get that get the value? value. Mm. Exactly. Okay. okay so, so that's the first, first question mm -hmm, that your attorney, your probate attorney pretty much has to address is where am I going to get the value? Mm -hmm. Because you go to them and you say, I'm going to open probate. They're going to base their fees on the court fees on the value. value of the property. Yeah. So where did that come from? Some attorneys order an appraisal. I've seen some attorneys have a real estate broker such as ourselves prepare the valuation for the court. Mm -hmm. And the, and then the, the third option is, of course, the government of Guam has assessed values, which I've seen that used as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just depends on what the attorney uses. But your market value, of course, would be based on the current um, market like what has sold that's similar because when the court um, agrees to a sale for example they would the value has to be within 90 percent so if, if if you offered on a property that was on probate and let's say you wanted to buy it uh, you cannot buy it you can't get a deal because the court is looking out in the best interest of the family mm. so they want to make sure you're buying it at the market value. I can't be sneaky you and can't, I, I can't go in there and lowball. And, you can't. Yeah. And, and Which is smart. So the court will say, is this the market value? And the market value has to be within the 90% value of the property. It can't be any less than that. And if it is, the court probably won't approve it. So everything has to go through the court process. The judge decides. But remember, the judge is looking at the best interest. Even if the family says, we're going, we want to get this property, uh, buy, we want to sell it to this individual, blah, 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 and, it, and let's say it's less. The judge looks at the best interest of the estate. Okay. So he, they won't do it any less than that. Okay, so now here's something we haven't talked about when it comes to probate, right? So, so say like a family goes through the entire probate process, uh, the judge assesses everything, says everything's in working order, I'm comfortable with the values as stated, mm -hmm. I'm going to sign off on it. Probate at that point is done, right? Do, oh, if, yeah, I, if I'm going to sell the property or I'm going to buy property that, that's now available, are there any more stipulations as far as having to clear that with a judge? Well, or it has to go to the, to the court to say, let's say you signed a purchase document and, and the attorney will request the court's approval. So that purchase um, agreement will go before the court mm -hmm. and the judge will review it and um, say, yes, we're approving this. But at the same time, someone else could show up and bid even higher. Mm. Yes, that has happened a number of times. So as opposed to if, someone lowballing the property, yes. somebody comes in but and let's outbids say, you. Let's say you want it to buy, mm -hmm. but you're buying it within the value. You're buying it at the purchase price. Mm -hmm. But then Gina shows up in court and says, I want to buy that property too, and then bids higher. Mm -hmm. So then the judge has to go through a process uh, on how to deal with that, but that has And now the happened. court, the institution of yes. legal jurisprudence becomes like the price is right. Right, right. but it, again, sometimes, they're, sometimes. again, they're Hopefully looking not. at what is in the best interest of the estate. If the estate can get a higher price, the judge might say, okay, give me your best offer. So we still have to run property that's gone through probate by the court at, at some point? N not necessarily, not necessarily. Jace. So. You asked what would the process be if it's gone through probate. Mm -hmm. There's two, if you, if you know for a fact that you're gonna sell property, there are two ways to do it. You could sell the property during the probate process. Mm -hmm. So first you need to ask the judge to, you know, to give approval to even sell the property and that's, you know, that's part of the process. 
or the family members can choose to close out the probate so that the property gets gets deeded basically yeah. distributed mm -hmm. to the family to the members family. first right. and then the family members will then put the property on the market for sale mm -hmm. in cases where you have a lot of family members I say anytime you have more than two or three people you have too many mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so too many cooks spoil the soup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it I, really it gets complicated. Ingredients. Yeah. So if you, well, so, but, but that, those are your options. You can ask the judge to distribute the property to all the family members. And then at that point, all the decision making is made by the family members who have received ownership. So let's say, for example, there are 10. There are 10 family members. The property was deeded to the 10 members. And then the probate is closed then if the 10 members want it to sell, it could get complicated because my sister Gina decides I don't want to sell. So sometimes it may be best to, if there's 10 family members, to handle it in the probate process so it's done. Otherwise, once it comes deeded, it could get a bit more complicated because if one disagrees, and that happens also in the probate process, if one disagrees, then the judge may make a determination. Okay, we, we, yeah, we got to wrap up the show, but I, I was going to ask, is it fair to say that probate matters are some of the most complex transactions that you as realtors have to deal with? It, it is, because mm -hmm. it's emotional. Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's not so, it's well, not so much it's a, emotional, period. It's not so much a paper chase. It's not so much, you know, you've got to, you know, there's all these legal things going back and forth and dollar signs all over the place, yeah. there, there's yeah. the emotional component. But we're exactly. guided but through the, the, the attorney I mean, the actually. laws are there yes. and the attorneys sure. guide us. But yes. I want to point out that even if family, if you're in probate and, you're, and you want to sell and you have family members that disagree, it doesn't mean you cannot sell. Yeah. It just complicates things, but the sell can proceed. Okay. How do you guys smile through all this? <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I, f I feel a lot better now that you've educated on me. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. We'll Cheers. see you next week. And we will see you next time. That is our show. We thank you as always for watching. Take care and bye-bye. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E.